Hey guys, so in 21 years, Mongol leader Genghis Khan conquered a territory, get this, almost 12 million square miles large. That's more than any other conqueror in history. Now, the name of Genghis Khan was synonymous for a pitiless and brutal conqueror who drowned his enemies in blood and wiped many peoples from the face of the earth for centuries. But that's how a ruler of half-wild tribes was able to build the largest continental empire in the world. So the man who became the great Mongolian Khan was born on the banks of the river Anan in Mongolia in about year 1162. He was originally called Temujin, which means from iron or blacksmith. Now, according to legend, Temujin was born grasping a blood clot in his right hand. Now, we can't say if that was real or not, of course. However, this child became one of the harshest and most bloodthirsty conquerors in human history. From a young age, Temujin experienced all the difficulties of life in the Mongolian steppe. When he was nine years old, his father arranged a marriage with his future wife, Borte, a 10-year-old girl from a wealthy tribe. He left his son while he was still young so that the children could get to know each other and then went home. According to the secret history of the Mongols, the father was met by Tatars on the way home who poisoned him. The clan's new leader, Tarlte, drove the family from their previous place and stole their livestock. The family, consisting of two widows, six boys, and one girl, spent several years living in absolute poverty, roaming the steppe, eating roots, carcasses, and fish. The family was even almost starving during the summer because they needed to save food for the winter. Targerte, a distant relative of Temujin, called himself the ruler of the lands that once belonged to Temujin's father, Yasugi. Wary of competition with his growing competitor, he started following Temujin. Now, one day, an armed force attacked the Yasuji family camp. Temujin was almost able to escape, but he was caught and imprisoned. He was put in a wooden kenge, an old type of portable socks, but he found a way to escape and hide in a small lake by submerging with the kenge and keeping one nostril above water. The envious tribe captured him again, as well as his pregnant wife, Borte. Now, despite these difficulties over time, he became known as a terrifying warrior. With support from Turil, a Khan from another father, Temujin's forces gradually grew. He started keeping bodyguards. He invaded his neighbors and multiplied his forces and herds. And he was different from other conquerors because he would try to keep as many people alive from the enemy forces as possible. This made them more likely to serve. He was wise, had a strong will, was harsh and observant. He kept a group of a chosen few around him dealt with his enemies alone, and started forming alliances with the heads of the main tribes. Now, by 1206, he had finished uniting the steppe nomads under his rule and started conquering. That's when Genghis Khan said, we have enemies everywhere, from the sunrise to the sunset. In the spring of 1206, by the source of the Onan River, at a type of Mongolian Congress, Temujin was called the Great Khan of all the tribes and was given the title Khan and the name Genghis. Mongolia transformed. Isolated and enemy Mongolian nomadic tribes united into one government. Genghis Khan's new Yasa law came to be. Yasa's main points are articles about helping each other and forbidding the betrayal of trust. Genghis Khan split the population into tens, hundreds, thousands, and ten thousands, mixing the tribes and groups together and appointing commanders to them from specially chosen trusted people and bodyguards. All the healthy adult men were considered warriors who would run their households during peace, but who took up weapons during war. Genghis Khan's forces amounted to about 95,000 men. But a great conquest demands a large, as well as organized, army. The dry Mongolian land lacking in food with constant wars with everyone, with everyone else, seasoned the Mongols and raised a nation of born warriors. But the organization of the Mongolian army wasn't great, and Genghis Khan needed to put much effort into leading it. He developed rules of war for his general and war support organization that were carried out 
to the letter. First, there was the detailed distance and close scouting, then the sudden attack, and finally, victory. Genghis Khan always tried to split up the enemy forces to defeat them in parts. He taught his generals to start using ambushes and traps to catch their enemies, and they were able to maneuver large amounts of cavalry on the battlefield. Genghis Khan's greatest conquering talent was in his ability to quickly change tactics depending on given obstacles. When his warriors started coming across forts, he started using all possible types of catapults. They were carried behind the soldiers unassembled and quickly put together for sieges. But you must understand that the Mongols did not have any mechanics. Genghis Khan took them from other countries willingly or by capture. After defeating his enemy, he left the artisans and specialists alive. They would become slaves, but they were kept in good conditions. With their help, the Mongols started producing stone and wall-piercing weapons and thrown vessels filled with gunpowder or a hot liquid. The Great Khan valued talented people and promoted his officers based on their abilities and experience, not on their birth or personal qualities. One famous example happened during a battle in 1201 when Genghis Khan's horse was shot and killed on the spot. The Great Khan was caught under the unlucky animal and survived only by a miracle. When the battle ended in victory, one of the generals ordered for the prisoners to be brought before him and demanded to know who shot the dead horse. One brave soldier came forward and said it was him. Genghis Khan appreciated his bravery and made him an officer. He was later called Jiba, meaning arrow, in honor of their meeting on the battlefield. Having received command over all of Mongolia and learned how to rule them, Genghis Khan started actively expanding his sphere of influence. He made the most of the Siberian peoples that he could reach tributaries. The almost 100,000 strong army invaded and conquered northern China. As a wise ruler, he took many things from them, like several types of weapons, military engineers, doctors, and wise men into his service. The lands of Central Asia like the Karakoram Khan and the ancient powerful Khorasan government fell under his onslaught. After conquering Khorasan, Genghis Khan sent his warriors further west. The Mongols went through Iran and conquered the Caucasus peoples. Then they moved north and threatened another powerful enemy, the Polovets tribes. In 1223, the Mongols would meet the warriors from Kievan Rus for the first time. Near the river Kalka, that is in modern Ukraine in the Donetsk Oblast, the more numerous Mongol forces defeated the United Rus and Polovets forces and captured their princes. The Mongols didn't go any further and after having carried out a large-scale scouting war in Europe, returned to their leader. The Europeans would only see the Mongols in their lands after Genghis Khan had died. Genghis Khan's last conquest was the Tangus Kingdom that he started attacking before he went into China and captured its land. Genghis Khan tried to build his great Khanate based on personal abilities. Only those who went through the trials of civil war and helped him build his yurt mounds received the highest positions in the empire. Every time he could, he gave serious orders to his bodyguards, but not his tribesmen. It seems when he divided the duties in his imperial conference, he was very stingy with his relatives and suspected them of disloyalty right up until his death. The Khan perfected and transferred the Khanate system to his empire, with all the clans becoming peoples that made up the Golden Nation's rulers. The rule of all the rulers not belonging to the Gold Nation weren't Khans, they were users. The ruling clan also formed a contract with the lesser clans and gave them land to rule. Voluntarily conquered rulers were treated the same way. They entered the Great Horde and became like sons-in-law of the clan during Genghis Khan's era. Contracts were made with all the conquered clans independent of culture or religion. He who comes to me is with me, but he who leaves is against me," said the great Genghis Khan in letters to Taoist wise men Chan Chuni. All of this made the Mongol government doctrine very liberal for the time, free from ethical or religious traditions, and let Genghis Khan's descendants rule their people for the next 300 years. Of all the mysteries surrounding the life of Genghis Khan, 
The most famous is the mystery of his death. Traditional legend says he died in 1227 from a wound he received falling off his horse. But the most unusual option is proposed by Tatar, saying that Genghis Khan was killed by a Tanga queen. She was in his harem, and during her wedding night, she used her teeth to tear out the throat of the man who falsely conquered her homeland. But this story doesn't have strong evidence. After his death, untold riches were left behind that occupied the minds of his descendants. According to sources, there were 500 tons of gold, 3,000 tons of silver, and other valuables. According to legend, the great conqueror felt his death coming. Before his last campaign, he planned to melt his valuables and hide them in seven wells. However, several objects were left untouched. They say that dozens of horses loaded with valuables stretched for several miles. They carried a blue diamond taken from the forehead of the goddess Shiva. A gold nugget weighing 172 pounds. Gold chain armor and a gold helmet belonging to Genghis Khan, as well as golden saddles and outfits, a gold yurt, and a throne. The Times Magazine carried out an investigation a few years ago and made a list of the 10 richest and most influential people of all time. The authors compared the wealth that belonged to these famous people, considering the time period they lived in, as well as the existing economic systems of the time. It resulted in Bill Gates, who is one of the richest men alive, barely beating out Genghis Khan. However, right before his death, the Khan did everything he could to keep his final resting place along with his innumerable riches secret. Although it's no longer possible to say exactly how many people died because of the Mongol conquest today, many historians think it was about 40 million. Writings from the Middle Ages show that the population of China alone sharply fell by tens of millions during the Khan's life. Also, experts counted about three quarters of the population in what is now modern Iran was destroyed during the war with the Khorram Shah government. As a result of the Mongol conquest, the population of the entire world dropped by 11%. That achievement can hardly be called something to be proud of by anyone. Well, that's all for today. Be sure to leave us a like, comment, let me know what the most interesting part of this video was. And we'll see you again next time.